cranberry process. Um, just a reminder before we, we start that make sure that you are muted, uh, turn off your camera, and then you can put your question in the chat box or you can unmute yourself at the end of the presentation. With that, I will give the floor to uh, Dr. Gallardo. You can share your screen, Karina, and I will turn off my mic and camera. Thank you, Massimo. Good morning, everybody. Uh, can you see my screen? Josie, yes. is it showing? Okay, yep. good. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. I am going to present on this topic of uh, the what is the consumer's perception of value added of the added sugar on cranberry products. I am presenting on behalf of my team. Uh, the team is composed mainly for, uh, for by a former PhD student, uh, Dr. Huijing Ma. Uh, Dr. Elizabeth Canales out of uh, Mississippi State University, and then with a very uh, nice collaboration with Dr. Massimo Llorizo, uh, uh, Dr. Amaya Tucha, and Dr. Juan Salapa out of Wisconsin. Uh, first of all, I'm going to say, what is the background of this study? Why are we studying how people perceive the other, the other sugar situation or the other sugar labels in cranberry products. Well, as you know better than I do, in 2016, there was a new regulation from the Food and Drug Administration that uh, all these products needed to have a declaration of added sugar in the nutrition facts panel uh, in, the, in the label. Okay, so what does this mean for uh, cranberry products? Well, they needed to have there, you know, a line that says below the total sugars includes this many grams of added sugar, right? And then the problem is that this inclusion of added sugars in most in instances create confusion on consumers. They are like, oh, they are on top of the total sugars, I'm going to consume more sugars, right? So they understand this as like on top of the 12 gram in my example, uh, I am going to consume eight grams extra. So this is too much sugar. This is not going to be good. They don't understand that the other sugars is included in the total sugar. And this creates confusion and this creates, you know, a bad impression to consumers who could go and start consuming other fruits, like for example, grape juice or, you know, apple juice that has more sugars, but they perceive not being as bad because they don't declare or they don't need to add the sugars, right? And you know that in cranberries, there is the need to add sugars because um, of the palatability of the product, right? So we have the need here to add sugars different from, you know, grapes, apples, and other fruits that naturally uh, uh, display or exhibit or contain more sugars. So this added sugar has a kind of like a negative healthy con health connotation, right? Of something like you are adding sugar, it is not a natural sugar, and they they could start perceiving the cranberry products as less healthy, right? So that is the background. We wanted to see, okay, what people think about all this. So what do we did? We conducted a survey back in December 2020 through March of 2021, we conducted a survey. We focused on two products of cranberries. The first one was dry cranberries and the second was cranberry juice. And within cranberry juice, we were curious if consumers will make a difference between, you know, the generic, general, say, cranberry juice or the different, uh, different types or categories of juice, like we have uh, blend the blends, right? You have cran apple, uh, cran grape, etc. We have a hundred percent use, and then we have cocktail, right? We, I, uh, so we differentiated across these three products and see if there is any implication of just presenting a generic uh, product, a generic use, or this differentiation between cocktail, a hundred percent use, and, and blend. So that's it. We we focus on these uh, two uh, big categories of products. We use the consumer research panel of Qualtrics. So Qualtrics is a company that has a platform that allows conducting surveys online, but they also have 
a very, very uh, comprehensive and uh, members sort of that, that you know they give coupons that you have to register and it is very comprehensive across the United States so it is the consumer research panel and um, since it is very vast we are able to tell them look you need to give me a sample of say 1,000 uh, res uh, respondents who are close to the demographics of the United States in terms of age gender and income. On top of that, we want people who are in charge of the grocery shopping in their household. And on top of that, uh, at least for the cranberry use, we have people who know about the different, who can differentiate cocktail from 100% use from blended, because you know, not everybody does that. Not everybody knows this difference and they just buy the cranberry juice, right? So in a sense, the people who responded to the dry cranberry survey, our our screening criteria here was that they have consumed dry cranberries at least once in the past year. So they have a notion of what dry cranberries are, how do they taste, how do they look, and what is the price point. For use, these were more knowledgeable people, right? Because uh, they needed to know the difference between cocktail, 100% use, and blended. And that is the reason the survey data collection lasted from December 2020 to March 2021, because it was difficult to find such profile of respondents, right? So we had 1,000 responses for each survey person version, sorry. So it's 1,000 went to the dry cranberries and 1,000 went to the use. And we did that, we also divided into treatments. Okay, so we have this survey or these results that I'm going to be presenting are representative of the 1,000 people who responded to the survey and who, and you're, I'm going to present how do they resemble in terms of age, gender, income, uh, um, educational background, and so on to the United States Census, okay? So we first try to do as close as possible to our sample of respondents be as representative as possible so we can make inferences and, you know, we can make generalizations. But at the end, you know, nothing is perfect and our survey, our responses or respondents are not as perfect as they want to be. So we are going to be presenting all that. So I explained that we focus on two big products, the dry cranberries or what we call SDC, sweet and dry cranberries, and the cranberry juice and two categories here. We funnel one type of question, so one section of questions considering unlabeled and the other section consider what we call the label juice. So unlabeled is this generic juice category and what we call the label juice is this differentiation between 100% juice, the cocktail and the blend, okay? And then we make this differentiation. We inform the consumer, we inform the respondent, what do we mean by 100% use? And we show pictures. So obviously we kind of like, we don't want, you know, private company logos in the, in the bottle because of research purposes. Um, but we, we show this, right? If you see a cran apple, this is what we call the blend. If you see a, a, the word cocktail on top, that is the cocktail and we have this explanation for every product we were showing okay so they knew their answer what they were answered for okay so i mentioned that we employ treatments in both the sdc in the sweet and dry cranberry and in the juice we had treatments okay why did we use treatments we wanted to test two things one thing was the health information, the health information about the cranberries. We wanted to see if we make a very increase the awareness or we make it you know, very explicitly obvious to the consumer that all the health benefits of the cranberries, if this by any chance will mitigate our a priori expectation that the other sugar will have a negative connotation in their perceptions. We wanted to test that. Okay, so we have what we call treatment two. In all the study, I'm going to be talking about treatment two, and it is the positive information frame. That it is the health connotation, uh, the health implications, the positive, the health benefits of ingesting cranberry products. And then our treatment three was 
the opposite. Some people are not aware that sugars are bad for their diet, right? They just heard about it, they know, but what if they are really informed and they are really aware of the connotations or the implications of having added sugar in their diet? So we wanted to test both information frames, the positive and the negative. So treatment two is positive information, treatment three is negative information, and treatment four combines both. So what we did here is what we call in a statistics a uh, between subject design. What does this mean? That we have 1,000 respondents, okay, for the juice or for the sweet and dry cranberries, and we divide the sample of 1,000 respondents in four different groups okay, in four different groups of 250 each. And group one of respondents received the control, no information. Treatment two, 250 different respondents received the positive information frame. Treatment three, 250 different respondents from the previous ones received the negative information frame. And the last 250 received a combination of both positive and negative information frame. So we wanted to test how these different information frames affect the perceptions or what we call willingness to pay for this added sugar line in cranberry products. Okay, so that is it. Now, we use a technique that it is called discrete choice experiments. Okay. And for this technique, we needed to have, you know, different attributes included in the survey. So for this design, these attributes, we had the collaboration, the help, the input of uh, Massimo, Amaya, and Juan. They were more knowledgeable of cranberry products than we did. We just, you know, designed the experiment in this way. We included two attributes which is the added sugars, and then Juan was interested in the method used to achieve the desired sweetness. Because, you know, uh, and he, told, he informed us that, there, you know, there are different methods. One is just adding regular sugar. Two is adding the concentration of other juices of other fruits, the ju juice, uh, other fruit juice from concentrate. And the third one is a combination of both regular sugar and fruit from other or juices from other fruit or concentrate from other fruits, right? Obviously, this is also had the input of some industry members who are close collaborators to this project, right? So, and then we use these three price, three price um, uh, reference points. And these three price reference points were really, we did a total research of prices in retail stores across the United States. And we took, you know, the me median because prices, you know, in Mississippi were different from Washington or in DC were different from Manhattan and things like that. They are not uniform prices. So we took, you know, we had a range of prices and we took the median of each and we, we needed to have three levels of prices and so on and so forth. So this is kind of like the input for our experimental design. And this is what the consumer saw. So this type of question does not ask directly how much you're willing to pay because from an statistics and economics standpoint that can have serious implications that could give biased results. So we use a technique to avoid bias, to avoid anything that could be, you know, creating noise in our estimations. We use a technique called discrete choice experiment in which we tell the respondent to imagine that they are in a grocery store and they are presented with two or three alternatives of different products. Each alternative has a combination of attributes, uh, attribute levels, and each is linked to a price. And they need to choose only one. Okay, so based on their choices is that we are able to estimate the willingness to pay for the added sugar or for the method used to achieve desired sweetness. Okay, so because we use, for example, this option A says that contains 12 grams of added sugar. This option B says it contains 23 grams of added sugars, right? So based on that random combination that it is coming from an experimental design that is very well studied and you know rigorous, 
we are able to estimate these amounts of money that people are willing to pay for the 12 grams versus the 23 grams versus the zero grams versus adding regular sugar only or versus adding other fruits from concentrate, okay? Other juices from concentrate. Okay, so that is what we do and these are our results. So what did we find? First of all, let me explain you who responded to the survey. So for this, what we do in this type of studies is compared to US census numbers. Since this survey was done in December through March of, December 2020 through March of 2021, we compared to census numbers of 2020, right? A very odd year, nonetheless, we did this study in that time frame. So what these results are telling us is that, you know, 52% of our responses were females or more females than males. Uh, we have, uh, we divide our age into two groups, millennials born after 1980, born in 1980 or after and zero otherwise. So we have, you know, about 60% of our respondents were millennials. Um, about you know 56, 49 to 56 percent of our respondents had a college degree. The college degree defined as four years in college or more. So here there is a difference with the census because according to U.S. Census, it's only 30 percent of U.S. population who has this degree. So our sample was had more years of college than the general census, have more females than general census. We didn't measure the age, but it was, you know, it has a higher proportion of millennials, the general census in general. And uh, household size, if they had, you know, more, uh, if they had more than three members. So yeah, most of the household size had more than three members, at least, you know, in between 50, 50 to 61% had more than three members. And about, you know, 43 to 53% of our sample size had at least one child less than 18 years old, 18 years old in their household. So presence of children was important. So this one was our sociodemographic characteristic. In case we want to know, have the sociodemographic profile, how people are responding, this was it, right? We use gender, age, uh, years in college, income level, and uh, size of the household and presence of children. Okay, so this is the people. So we have, you know, more females, a little bit more running into the millennials, more years of education. Income was comparable to the income of the US, you know, 87,500 uh, per year. Uh, household size, we couldn't compare this one, but presence of children, our sample had more children than the general US population. Now, these are the results. What did we see? So how do we interpret these results? This is this applies, this slide is talking about the results that we obtain for the sweet and dry cranberries, okay? So these negative bars, what we are doing here is presenting uh, the respondent's expectation to pay, okay? So they expect to pay, uh, how much they expect to pay for a product that contains this added sugar label. So here we are comparing uh, additional, like the presence of added sugar. So comparing the 23 grams with the 12 grams, for example, right? So the more sugar we discover here, the less they are expected to pay, okay? The more sugar, so if you have the added sugar saying 12 grams versus 23 grams, they are expected to pay less for the 23 grams, the higher sugar content, compared to the 12 grams. And if it has zero grams, obviously, they are expected to pay much less for the 23 grams or the 12 grams with respect to the zero grams, right? So this is measuring for incrementals of the added sugar how much they are expected to pay. And you can see all of them are negative, regardless of the treatment. So that was our first finding. Respondents in general expect to pay less for added sugars, right? So if, if it has the added sugar and the added sugar has a number next to it, the 12 grams or the 23 grams, they are expected to pay less. What about the health benefits? Did they having like explicitly mentioned 
the health benefits there mitigated this less expectation to pay? The response is no, look at this, treatment two is even larger, right? So the, the, it didn't have any positive effect. Our expectation was that this column in treatment two was going to be shorter than in the control, but it wasn't. Saying that if you tell the consumer this product is healthy, instead of saying, oh, okay, then I will have less, you no, they seem to, you know, to be more taxing and say, well, I expect this, since it is so healthy and so nice, this do not have that many sugars. Obviously, as this one we expect, the treatment three is even, you know, the expectation to pay less is even more pronounced. And when it is a combination of both sets of information, the positive and the negative, is even the is even higher, you right, the expectation to pay less. Okay, so that is for added sugars. General message, sweet and dry cranberries, having added sugars there, consumers will expect to pay less because they have this negative perception of the added sugar uh, information in the label. Regardless of, you know, what piece of information they have, very aware, they are very aware of, right? So that is for that. Now, let's talk about the method to achieve the desired sweetness, okay? And here, so this is the way we are presenting the results. We present the regular sugar and then the other fruit from concentrate, and we compare to the um, combination of regular plus uh, other sugar from concentrate. So we had, remember, we had three levels. Level one was regular sugar only. Regu level two was other fruit from concentrate, other juices from concentrate only. And level three was the combo of those two. So here we're measuring the regular sugar and the other fruit juices in relation to the combo. So in relation to the combo, people are willing to expect, are, 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 are uh, expected to pay more for the other sugar from concentrate, if they are not tell any other information about anything about cranberries, you know, look at this bar. It's much higher than the regular sugar only. Nonetheless, they are willing to pay more for regular sugar than the combination. That is that is a bit strange, we thought. When we tell them about the health benefits of cranberries, again, you know, other fruit juices from concentrate received, uh, here is a positive, you know, uh, payment expectation compared to the regular sugar only. And this is a noisy one. We did not expect that when they told, they were told about, you know, the negative effects of uh, regular sugar in their diets and stuff like that. The, this regular sugar only was higher, right? So this is what we call a noise. This is not consistent to the other findings. And in general, both methods of sweetness in, with relation to the combo, to the combination of regular sugar and other fruit from concentrates were negative. So our conclusion, but still the, the juices from concentrate, the, the expectation to pay less was shorter, right? So our conclusion of this, if we don't consider this uh, treatment three, which is the outlier, is that people favor the other fruit juices from concentrate alone, okay? So that, that is their preferred method of sweetness. That is, we are talking about so far in uh, sweet and dry cranberries. Let's see of the juices. So here, what I'm presenting is a side-by-side -side comparison of our results with the unlabeled juice and the labeled juice. Recall the people who responded the juice survey were more knowledgeable, okay? Remember, they know about the difference between 100% juice the blend and the cocktail. So they, these guys are knowledgeable. So that's why they are a little bit different from the sweet and dry cranberries. Here, in general, they are willing to pay or they are expected, sorry, to pay less for the added sugar. That is consistent for the dry cranberries and for the juices, either label or unlabel, consistently they are willing to pay Le they are expected to pay less for the added sugar. Same explanation as before. If you have a juice saying to, to add it 14 grams of sugar versus a juice that says added 29 grams of sugar, they will are expected to pay less for the 29 grams of sugar, added sugar, compared to the 14 grams of added sugar. So expected to pay less for added sugars in cranberry juice. 
what about the treatments here? What about the health, the healthy benefits of consuming cranberries that does mitigate this negativity? Response again is no. Treatment two, the expectation to pay less is more pronounced compared to the control. Control is treatment one. Re, see here is more pronounced and here in labeled use is more pronounced as well. Treatment three was the treatment that you make aware of the effects or the dietary effects of consumer sugar. Well, here it reduced, but it's still higher than the control. Uh, here is lower. Okay, so maybe these guys really don't care much about regular added regular sugar. I don't know, these were different people responding to each treatment, recall that. But consistently, when they receive both pieces of information, you know, they are the willing to pay less or the expectation to pay less is even more pronounced in both cases. Well, not in treatment four. Okay, so our conclusion with this is that the health benefits of cranberries did not mitigate the negative impact of knowing that the product contained added sugars or the increase in added sugars. It did not mitigate a negative impact. That is the conclusion of this slide. And now what about the method to achieve sweetness? Well, let's see here. This is treatment one, the control, right? Added, look at here, the regular, uh, regular sugar compared to the combo is negative. This is the same rationale. We here is in relation to the combination of these two, regular and other fruit juices from concentrate. So regular only is negative compared to the combination. Here, consistently, uh, the other fruit juices from concentrate alone receives a higher price, a uh, higher price, a uh, higher expectation to pay compared to the combination, right? Uh, and then, in general, regular sugar is not favored. And it is the same story, but in a smaller scale, <clears throat> when they are presented, <clears throat> excuse me, the difference between cocktail, 100% juice, and, uh, and, um, and uh, the blend, the willingness to pay gets shorter for some reason. And we, we have not been able to discern why, right? They, they seem to be more cautious. Uh, we less enthusiasts to pay more, but when it's generic, they are paying more. This is, has nothing to do that. Don't don't blame your stuff like that. But I don't know. Maybe people who are presented with a hundred percent use uh, a blend or or cocktail, maybe they have different expectations of the product, right? So uh, maybe they are more demanding uh, rather than when it is a generic general category of 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 cranberry use. Okay. So that is the story for this slide. And next, what we did, we wanted to really investigate who are the people who want what, because the responses were heterogeneous. There is no everybody coincide on that. There was a lot of noise, standard deviations were high. So we needed to see what was causing that heterogeneity in responses, why people we're having different viewpoints, different expectations to pay. So we did what we call a segmentation analysis, that is identify groups of people within a sample of respondents and see if these were, they have different perceptions, okay? So we had four different criteria, right? To segment our sample. The first one was those who look at the nutrition facts panel versus those who don't look. So we ask other questions in the survey that allow us to make this, you know, segmentation in our sample of respondents, right? So we ask, do you really read the nutrition fact panel? Do you base your choices of food on the, by the information in the nutrition fact panel? Because there's people that don't care, they just buy the product, right? But there's people that actually read what is in there, read the calorie content, read everything, yeah? fat and everything. But there's people that don't care. So we use that criteria, right? Those who read and those who don't read the nutrition fact pan. The second criteria was those who actually pay attention to the added sugar lab, added sugar line in the nutrition fact pan. So we had, you know, there was heterogeneity there. There were people like, yes, I'm very eager to look at added sugar within the nutrition fact pan. There were people like, like they didn't care. So we divided our sample about having that criteria because it was you know relevant to our study and then we had another third criteria 
about the nutrition. Do you, we, the question here we posed was, um, do you consider nutrition and healthy aspects when you decide to buy a food product, right? Because we, there were different uh, things, like we had price concerns, nutrition and healthy aspects, ethical concerns, religious concerns. So what is your priority? What are you thinking of first when you go and buy a product? So those who really care about nutrition and health, those what we call them nutrition versus those who don't care about nutrition and health when buying a, a food product in general. And our fourth one is an interesting one. We ask if they suffer from a chronic disease related to diet, say high cholesterol, cardiac, diabetes, etc. Right? So those who suffer from any of those, you know, chronic uh, conditions related to diet and those who don't. And these are the results that we obtain. So this is uh, the expectation to pay for added sugar. Okay, expectation to pay for added sugar. What are we seeing here? As obvious, those who read the Nutrition Fact Panel are expected to pay less for added sugar. See, this column is larger. And this is consistent across all three products categories that we analyze, dry, unlabeled, unlabeled. Uh, consistently, those who read the Nutrition Fact Panels are expected to pay less for the added sugar line, okay? Those who care about added sugars in nutrition fat panels are expected to pay less. This, this, this uh, column or bar or yeah, column is more pronounced in all three cases. Now, those who care about nutrition and health, obviously they are expected to pay less. So those guys really don't like the added sugar line in the cranberry products. What about those who suffer from chronic diseases? Look, here there were uh, not statistically significant differences, but even in that case, the ones who do not suffer from a chronic disease were expected to pay less than those who do. Our a priori expectation was this, those who suffer from a chronic disease related to diet, were expected to pay less, but we only observed that in the labeled use. We did not observe that in the unlabeled use or in the dry cranberries. That was an interesting finding that we had, right? Um, we were trying to make sense of these results. Amaya said it's probably like people who already suffer from a chronic disease. I mean, they are on medication. They probably don't care much about their diet or, they, you know, they are in denial whatever, I mean, we need to find an explanation for, the, for these results that we are obtaining. So in summary, summarizing our findings, and this is my last slide, respondents consistently expect to pay less for increases in added sugar in cranberry products, okay? In terms of their preferred method to sweeten the cranberry products, with some noise, in most cases, as we tell, we have some uh, outliers there. The preferred method for sweetening is the uh, fruit juice coming from concentrate, okay? Fruit juice coming from concentrate. And that is consistently preferred, or in most cases, in most cases, with some noise, uh, there is pref that is preferred compared to the addition of regular sugar alone. Okay, now what about the health claims? What about the health claims? We found in our sample of respondents that these health claims do not offset the impact uh, of the information of the dietary effects of consumer sugar and do not offset the impact of having the added sugar line in the nutrition fact panel. Okay, so this study is actually uh, generated a publication in the Journal of the Agricultural and Applied Economics. It went public um, April 2024. It is publicly available. That is the information in case you want to go in depth in our methodology, in our findings. We have other stuff also, uh, other findings that I'm not presented in this. And with this, I finish my presentation and open the floor for any questions. Thank you so much.
Okay, thank you, Karina. And uh, I'll just start with one question from Miriam Barrel. Um, how do you explain uh, the treatment for it's consistently worse than treatment free? If you pull up the 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 slide, Karina, I can tell you which uh, slide. Oh, Miriam, oh, you are you can unmute yourself if you want. Yes, I, I was very curious about why uh, it makes it worse than just stating that the added sugar are bad for your health. What, how, what is your hypothesis and why people find it even worse than that? <laughs> that is very surprising uh, for me. So we wanted to test both because, you know, we wanted to test, we wanted to capture uh, both sides of the story, right? There is people that it is very mm -hmm. aware, those who have children uh, are very aware of the effects of having a product high in sugar content, right? But there is people that are not aware and actually really don't care. Like we discovered that there is a, mm -hmm. based on other questions in the survey, we discovered that there is a group that really likes the cocktail, right? So it's people with no kids that are more keen in buying cocktail only, right? But people with kids will go more for the 100% use. So we wanted to see if having this information really explicit, increase the awareness in a very explicit way will have any impact on their decisions. And yes, it did, right? And in most cases, they were willing to pay less or they were expected to pay a lower price for that, but with some noises in some instances. Okay. Any other questions? No. Karina, was there any specific question about type of blend? Uh, what type of other uh, um, blend they like, prefer? You know what? I, I, my first, I don't have it on top of my head, but my first recollection is no. Elizabeth Canales, my co-author, I see her in the audience, so she can probably help me here, but no. But for sure, in our discrete choice experiment, no, we did not follow up. Like, if if it's a blend, it's apple or grape or yeah we did or cherry no we did not did in the discrete choice for sure we didn't do but if there was other like background question my first impression is that we did not that is something that we should have done elizabeth you're there do you I, have I, oh yeah. i don't think so let me let me check the paper <laughs> yeah i don't have it on top of my head sorry but i know that in the discrete choice experience we didn't do it Any other questions, comments? And that was also a critique from one of the reviewers. Okay. And not all of them will be, not all the blends can be possible because some might kill completely the, the flavor, I guess. But... Yeah, and, and then, you know, the Elizabeth did this really thorough investigation in the FDA of, you know, because cocktail has, you know, different standards of added sugar than 100% use, I guess it doesn't, it has some limitation versus the blended. So we were careful with that. So our 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 um, fear was that if we, like say, this is a blended cran apple, then we will buy us because maybe that person didn't drink cran apple, they were more into the cran grapes and it will create a bias response, right? So. There is, we had to make trade-offs, right? There is no perfect setup for this study. So we studied carefully each of the cases we could present, and we decided for the ones that we give us more meaningful results, uh, according to our criteria, maybe not, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Boston, the other one at the back of that shed, right by that sprinkler. Tommy, do you have a question? Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, I guess uh, just uh, um, to remind to everybody that uh, um, you can, uh, so uh, you, you will receive a, a survey after the, after the, the webinar. Um, you can reply to the survey and give feedback on a new idea for comments, for new idea for uh, things that uh, we might be uh, working on uh, in the Cranberry product uh, area. And uh, we thank you uh, for uh, attending the, the webinar and we will restart uh, uh, new webinars probably in September, October for uh, the backup uh, webinar. Uh, uh, Massimo, just, Mario, Karina, just, so, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Were they asking about which juice was preferred? Is that Was that the question? Yes. Yeah, so, um, so I was looking at Karina, the willingness to pay and the 100% juice had a higher willingness to pay, um, and then, and then the cocktail and the blend were very similar. Right. No, the question was more uh, if any specific fruit, uh, any specific cocktail was uh, was. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I thought it was the actual juice. Yeah. No, we did not. We did not include that. We did not include that. Yes. Okay. So I guess uh, that just other reminder, uh, uh, Juicy added the, the the link to see where the, all the webinar are um, are hosted. Uh, you can look at all the webinar that we have uh, um, delivered on the website. Uh, and then uh, yeah, with that, thank you again for uh, for attending the the webinar. And have a good summer. <laughs>